Back here on Radio Row. Our Super Bowl coverage all week brought to you by the good folks at Low T Centers of Nashville. Darren McFarland, Brad Hopkins, and Derek Mason with you. And we're now joined by former Vols running back Jamal Lewis. Jamal, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. So you, uh, you made the trek up from Atlanta, which we heard was a little sketchy earlier in the week. That's why I said uh, it must be meant for me to be here because <laughs> I got on a 640 flight after about about two or three of my flights was already canceled, and uh, I ended up making it. I ended up making it through. I didn't think that the flight was going to get out, but it did. I had to take the, the, the Marta's train from my house down to the airport because uh, the roads was just bad. But um, they say pretty much everything's cleared up now, but, but Atlanta went through a struggle for the last two days. So. Now, was it exactly the way that we saw it? Because we saw it on the Internet and on news, and it was it looked terrible. Was it that bad? It was that bad. It was that bad. It, it, was more, it wasn't about the snow or how much snow we got. It was the fact that, it, you know, just the weather changed, and we didn't have the salt trucks out. We didn't have the proper equipment out. And it froze. And one of the biggest problems was with the whole dilemma was they let the schools out and mm. employees that worked in the city, uh-huh. they let them all out at the same time. Ooh. So that caused a major, major traffic jam Jamal, everywhere. Were they, were they trying to get them home because the weather was coming yep. in? Yeah, yep. they were trying, let- yeah. trying to get them home yeah. because cause it, it, was, it was a warning. But then when it got serious, because I was out, because I was trying to get to the airport, and I was out. And then um, uh, we ended up getting calls from the school, and they just let everybody out at, like, one time. <laughs> <laughs> Go get your kids. <laughs> and next thing you know, it was gridlocked because the uh, the ice had started forming on the highway. What is it about ice in Atlanta around Super Bowl time? Exactly. You know, <laughs> isn't that, it's, it's crazy, but we just don't have the salt trucks. Like, we only had three, I think, three salt trucks. <clears throat> for for the city because the thing the last storm we had was like 2011 uh-huh. so it's not a regular occurrence you know but uh we just got to beef up our equipment <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing down there now uh, i have a company called expertevalcom and we just uh you know i put together a group of guys uh from the nfl former players that actually been there done that and, and performed and excelled at different levels from college well high school college to the pros and, um, you know, basically we saw a gap within the recruiting sector and, and kids was losing the fundamentals of the game, just trying to get that demand for exposure. So what we did was kind of offer our expertise to give these guys evaluations uh, by position. So we have Cordell Stewart, um, Troy Brown, uh, myself, uh, Willie McGinnis, uh, Steve Atwater, Ray Buchanan, different guys at different positions that when a kid sent us their film online, we able to give them back a match them with the right expert that played their position to give them some credible advice. So what position you think is has diminished the most? Is it the running back position? Is it the wide receiver? Or is it the quarterback? Or is it, you know, the guys on defense? Well, I, I think it's more uh, uh, out, outside of the linebacker position, uh-huh. I think, because they've downsized in the linebacker area as far as size. But the running back position has really deteriorated. And I think it's, it's so many running backs out here on the youth level because everybody wants to play running back. And it's not hard to find uh, a, a running back to go into your system, you know. And, and, and with the dynamic of, of offenses changing and everything else, you know, you really want a wide receiver at running back because you want to be able to run and you want to be able to motion out and, and, and run routes and everything else. So that's why I think the running back position has diminished. Okay, now, now saying that, and that kind of leads me to my next question, the Super Bowl. Would you, have, would you rather have a smash mouth Seattle team or a, you know, a la throw, throw the ball around a yard Denver team? I know you're a former running back, and, and I know I can assume what you would say, but which one would you rather have? Well, well, I think that, that due to the elements and that football is an outside sport, I think that, you know, during the season, you can throw the ball around and you can do a lot of that and score a lot of points, but when it gets down to the elements and, and you know, the weather, that's where I think, you know, that run game really serves a purpose, and it, it does a lot with controlling the time of possession. It does a lot with, you know, keeping a guy like Peyton Manning off the field. So by having a good run game, you can really kind of control a lot of what you do out on the field. You know, not excluding the passing game, but you still want to move the ball, move the chains, but how fast do you want to do it? You can score in a, in a minute and 20 seconds, but at the same time, 
it, it's you know it, it's, it gives that other team time to get back out there and do their thing as well. You know, earlier today, Jamal Lewis, we had a conversation with Mike and Mike, and Greenberg said he would rather have the Super Bowl be played in every NFL city just to give everyone an opportunity to host it. Yep. Mike Golick, on the other hand, being a player, he said, you know, he didn't want weather to be an issue. So when you're talking about potentially, you know, cold weather and performing at a level that you're used to playing at, you've got to say that there's a little more immers- adversity when you're playing this late in the season outside. Oh, oh yeah, most definitely. Most definitely because you, you know what it does. You know, it, it's almost like even with practice, and, and I played for two cold in two cold cities, and there was a different awareness. There was a different, you know, uh, you know your, your antennas was up. You had to make sure your shoes were right. You had to make sure your gloves are right. You had to make sure you got on the right layers. You know, it, it just gives you that that sense of urgency and that, that different awareness that, you know, heightens where if you don't have to worry about all of that, right. it's like you can be a little more relaxed and, you know, it's just, just better elements. But I think with football and, and, and the way we play this game, hey, it's January. Well, it's, you know, it's played on the second, but – it's this time of the year. Right. Hey, you know, let's let's play in the elements. Like you said, wherever it is, we got to do it, you know. When you ran for almost 300 yards against the Browns, you know, we, we've seen the, the basketball moments, right, where Michael Jordan can't miss and he looks over and just <laughs> shrugs his shoulders. And says, Look, it's whatever I'm doing, it's just going to work tonight. Did you have that same feeling in that game, like this is going to be different than other games? Well, not not really. It was just I was I was just kind of, peed off because the game before that I think I got like 15 carries and like 57 yards and, uh, and 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 our quarterback got hurt so Anthony Wright was uh, what moved in as quarterback but going into that game I just knew hey I got to go out here because my, my my number is about to be called and, and 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 coaches is expecting for me to step it up you know and uh, I, I just took on you know just just I took it on and in that game, when I was going, hey, it was, like you said, you start to think about those moments like Jordan, you know, and you're just hot. And I think in that game, that's what it was. I was hot, and they really did not have an answer for what we were doing, and we did it well. And uh, it ended up being a 295-yard game. Jamal Lewis here at our table, kind of along the same lines. The 2,000-yard season, we got to see that in 2009 with Chris Johnson. Very few backs have ever done it in NFL history. When did you know this season had potential to be special? Um, I think, it, honestly, it was about four games in or so when it was like, you know, after the 295-yard game, then we come back and get, a hundred. you know, when you're starting to get 140, 150, you know, uh, closer to 200-yard games, you know, when you start piling those up and the way our offensive line was, was, was geared up and the way they was working and the way they had, you know, really said, hey, we got to depend on the running game because we had lost uh, Kyle Bowler early, um, in the first game. It was um, basically we just knew that we was destined for something great and we just wanted to add it up and, and turn it up, you know, and just see where it went. And it ended up being for 2,000 yards. Looking at your career, before there was Marshawn Lynch, there was Jamal Lewis, that bruising, run-over-the-defender type running style. Mm-hmm. Now, we've talked a little bit about how Roger Goodell is trying to make the game a little bit safer, dealing with concussions and things of that nature. How do you think a guy like you would fare you know, in today's game compared to when you were running over people back in the day? Well, the difference is the way I attack my opponent and the way I attack the line of scrimmage and the way I ran, I really think that you know the way the way this is now. You know they're they're they're, they're tackling now. You know when I when I was oh, yeah, when I when yeah, I when yeah. I was playing, we was getting hit. So it was it's way different. You know the, these guys on Great defense, point. they have to have good technique in tackling now because they can't launch at somebody and just knock them out. They have to come up and really form tackle somebody and. The way I ran, you know, I love for a, a guy to get down in a, a form tackle position, you know, and I'm coming with a, with a head of steam. That's what I want you to do. But, uh, you know, I think that dynamic changes. But at the same time, guys like Adrian Peterson and Marshawn Lynch and Murray, they understand that, mm-hmm. and they take advantage of that, which if these other guys would take advantage of that, they can see more big runs and more explosive plays because – 
just because it's just the technique point of it uh, of tackling. Now, how big was it for you, and this this has been recent for you, how big was it for you to be inducted into the Ring of Honor over there in, in, in M&T Bank Stadium? Oh, it was, it was huge. It was huge. Uh, when I got the call from Bashadi, you know, um, it just it just kind of solidifies the fact that, hey, you know, this was my family. This is my second home um, in Baltimore. And, you know, it was, you know, I went to Baltimore when I was 20 years old, you know, when I got drafted. And it was, you know, I spent – what really seven 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 or eight of my years there you know growing up and you know the life lessons and what I learned there and everything that I been, went through growing up you know from 20 to 27 28 years old you know I spent in Baltimore and to be able to to have my name in the stadium and for them to recognize me and give me that accomplishment it was just it, it was great you know it was a great feeling you won a national championship at UT first year of the BCS in 1998 you see the program today. One, do you get back much? Have you had a chance to meet Butch Jones? Do you think the program is headed in the right direction? I think the program is headed in the right direction. I think that Butch is instilling some good discipline, some good work ethic in these guys. And at the same time, he just has to go out and get his talent. He has, he has to go out and get his players. He's doing a great job of recruiting. And I think he just brings that energy to a high level around that uh, that university. And uh, I think they have some good years to come. I do go up periodically and go to a few games. I want to go to more. Um, but it's all about recruiting. And that's 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 what it's all about with, with UT and, and them getting back to the caliber of, 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 uh, of play that they're He's got a good to. signing class coming in. Oh, yeah, he has a good one. He has a real good one. Jamal, if I can take a second and touch on the pro team in Tennessee, the one that you stopped from going to the Super Bowl for a second time, <laughs> <laughs> and just talk about you being one of the guys that's in the 2,000-yard rushing season, you know, rushing yards per season, along with Chris Johnson. A lot of people think that that 2,000 yards put him – Almost in the upper echelon to where he's getting criticized and, and really has to live up to the to the money uh, he's made. Just talk about being uh, that guy with that kind of pressure. That is, it was, you know, going for 2,000, it was a gift and a curse. Because, first of all, if you go back and you look at the history, and that's what I do. I look at history. Uh, after any 2,000-yard rusher, you know, how many yards did he get the year after? Mm-hmm. It wasn't that many, you know. It, wasn't, it, it sure wasn't close to 2,000. Um, just because of the wear and tear and everything. But... When you get 2,000 yards, everybody is expecting you to get 2,000 yards. And you set that standard, and you just can't go out there and try to live up to that every year because that's something special, and you will drain yourself and mentally strain yourself trying to go back and chase that. And I did that for years trying to chase that 295-yard game, trying to chase 2,000 yards instead of just focusing on the job at hand and going out and doing what I had to do. You're trying to live up to something that everybody is saying, oh, you're a 2,000-yard rusher. Oh, you, you know, what, we're going to get 2,500 this year? And seems easy, but at the same time, everything has to fall in place, and it's about a team effort anyway. So, it, it, it you know, the only way you can get 2,000 yards is you got to have a terrible quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jamal. Quickly again, plug what you're doing down in Atlanta, and then we got to get off. <laughs> hey, expertdeval.com is the company. Uh, we give incredible uh, insight to, to high school players' game. So if you want to, to get evaluated or get your child evaluated or find out where he is, uh, you go to expertdeval.com, and we'll match you with an expert that's played the game to give you some, some, some good insight and a good comprehensive evaluation. Hey, thanks for doing this. Good to catch up with you again. Hey, thanks for having thanks me Thanks a lot, Jay Luke. Jamal yeah. Lewis.